which was owned by Simon the town. All right. I just have to talk to somebody. All right. The next day, they get up early in the morning and they travel to Caesarea because Caesarea is where Cornelius lived. All right. And so when they get to Caesarea, Cornelius opened the door. But what they don't know is that Cornelius has invited all of his family. All right. And all of his close friends because the preacher is coming to our house. All right. Can I help somebody? Come on. And I submit to you that whenever you got a preacher Amen. coming to your house, all right. you ought to invite all of your family. I mean, you do want your family members saying, don't you? Amen. Come on, talk to me. Sir. Amen. I said, you, you do want your family. Say. You want your you want that hard-headed boy yeah. saved. You yeah. want that wayward daughter Say. saved. Say. You even want the guy you shocking with. Say. So whenever the preacher is coming to your house, you need to invite all of your family and your close friends all right. to be there because you never know what will happen. Right. Believe me when I tell you, strange things happen yeah. when the preacher shows up. Amen. Right. I wish I had a witness to that. All right. I said, I wish I had a witness to that. Amen. Strange things happen when the preacher shows up because the preacher will not show up unless there's communication from heaven. All right. I wish you would hear me here. All right. Matter of fact, when I thought about the fact that Cornelius had invited all of his family and his friends, I said to myself, this would make a good thing for family and friends. All right. Because folk come to church for funerals. Folk come to church for musicals. Folk come to church for baby showers. Folk come to church for baby dedication. Folk come to church for weddings. But you can't get folk to come just to hear the preacher. All right. And I told you once, I told you twice, I'll tell you again. The only way you can get to heaven, the first stop is by the preacher. All right. But some folks are content in their own mind to think that once this life is over, you're done. All right. Mm. But dead is not done, brothers and sisters. All right. You got to understand that there's an afterlife. God did not create all of us that's in this room so that we can live and die. All right. He did not create all of us so that we could grow up, learn how to walk, learn how to talk, matriculate through the, through the school system, go to higher learning, get good jobs, raise our kids, and then turn around and die. All right. Hey, hey, come on, come on. Right. God created us for a purpose, and you heard some people tears talk about a purpose, did you not? All right. I said, you heard them. You heard some poor, maybe y'all don't know what poor is, let me break it down. You heard some ministers standing behind the pulpit and said, God has a purpose for you, have you not? All right. Well, your purpose is that God is trying to save you. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Because God has that kind of love for all of us in this room. He loves us so much that he wants to save all of us. Amen. Now, why y'all are dried up on that? Let me check back to the Garden of Eden. After Adam had sinned and broke the heart of God, come on, God, come on, God. God put him out of the Garden of Eden. All right. He didn't put him out as punishment. He put him out because in the Garden of Eden was the tree of life. All right. And since man had sinned, the next tree he was going to eat from would be the tree of life. Now, if he had ate from the tree of life after he had sinned, it meant that he would have lived forever with whatever sickness or disease he had. Which means if he had cancer that was deteriorating his body, he would never die. All right. I wish I could help somebody. All right. I said, I wish I could help somebody. Amen. If he had a stroke that caused him to be brain dead, he would still never die. All right. I wish you would help him. What I'm trying to tell you is that trouble would not end if God had not put Adam out of the garden of Eden. All right. I wish you would help me help. 
and so on and so brothers and sisters you've got to understand that God is trying to say not only Adam but he's trying to say all of us that's why some of the stuff that you want to do that's not right never works out right all right all right and some folks are confused about what a blessing is because everything you get in this life that you're happy with is not a blessing. All right. Can I tell you that? All right. I said, can I tell you that? Amen. If you should decide or find that you met a, a person, I'm going to say a person because I don't know what I think I'm talking about. Because I walk down the many streets and people feel like I'm in the wrong street. If you should find a person that you fall in love with, y'all kicking boots together, you know what I mean, rubbing ankles. And you feel like this is the darling of your heart and you want to spend the rest of your life with them. That's not necessarily a blessing. All right. Are you listening to me? Amen. Now here is the confirmation point of it. If you should get married to them or get in a relationship with them and they never want you to go to church. All right. All right. You know, they don't really want to spend time with you till Sunday. All right. That's not a blessing. All right. That's one of those tempting things that's been sent by the devil. All right. Because whatever the Lord gives you is always going to draw you closer. Yeah. And that's why, young people, you got to be careful about what looks good. All right. Because what looks good to you may not necessarily be good for you. All right. Yeah. All right. Do I have a witness? Amen. I said, do I have a witness here? Amen. There are people right now in this life who are miserable because they didn't. And people no longer wait on the Lord. They got to do everything right now. So we gonna kick it on the first day. By the time we get to the second day, I know where the mold and the tattoo on your intimate parts are. People are no longer patient. Listen, if something is really good for you, it's worth waiting for. And if Joe Bob can't understand that, you need to kick him to the curb. Because I don't care if he's driving a Mercedes Benz, got a job making $100,000 a year, he's not giving you nothing. All right. Yeah, he'll wine you and dine you with little trinkets and fake diamonds, a little bit of fake gold, make you think. Some of us men still think, not me personally. <laughs> Some of us men still think that the way to a woman's underwear is through money. All right. And if we give her fine things. Matter of fact, that's our whole game, man. Oh, baby, I can do What's the joke are you with now? What is he doing for you? How he got you out here dressed like this? I can give you. <laughs> Actually, I heard that on a reality show. It's not a blessing. Right. The one thing you can be sure is always a blessing is when the Lord sends the preacher. So Cornelius, I got to go. That's enough for the day. So Cornelius had invited all of his family. All right.